these levels. Some of these levels would be a friggin' nightmare to do on with, from a cold start, but I'm not doing this. I'm not doing the, these levels on a cold start. Especially not since I'm headed to the Azure Fortress now. Yeah. Yeah, remember what I said before about this being a nightmare um, to do from a cold start? Well, what I meant by cold start is um, basically removing all your weapons and all your items when you start a new level. Yeah, a friggin' nightmare to cold start this place. This game already does that for me a little bit, with um, stripping all of my items down to just one each at the start of a level. But yeah, there are some people who are actually masochistic enough to do that. There are actually a lot of people masochistic enough to do cold starts on a lot of these older sort of games. For me though, number one, not only is it unfairly hard, but for me it also kind of kills the point of going through each of these great levels and collecting all these weapons and then just going to town on everything in your way. Also, one really big thing in these games is uh, deciding the threat priority of enemies. Like in this case, since I have the Shadow Sphere that makes me immune to those knights all over the place, the Ophidians come first. Literally shooting in the dark there. <laughs> Stop that. Well, one other thing that's uh, been happening um, ever since uh, during the whole video hiatus was a while ago I got a program called Slade, which apparently is used to modify these sorts of games. And I was planning on making a number of modifications for this game and for Doom as well. Unfortunately, due to the hardware problems, I am currently unable to finish them. Plus, I was having some uh, difficulty with uh, putting in animations and stuff for new weapons. Whoa, whoa, I saw that! 
<laughs> I saw that guy trying to sneak around me. Little jerk. And of course the whole um, new hardware deal. Slade is one of those newer programs that apparently stores... doesn't store absolutely everything on its hard drive. The files made with it um, aren't, don't do that. But the program itself does. And that slowed my progress with uh, making cool stuff even further. No, there's another nitro golem back there. A nitro mummy. There we go. Might have been a little bit overkill, but what can you say? Other than there's no such thing as overkill. Only just enough kill. <laughs> Especially when you're dealing with bloodthirsty monsters and undead, evil machinations of all kind. And brainwashed people who apparently can shoot electricity from their hands. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that those, um, those magic missiles that they shoot out are actually electrical. Especially since Disparal himself, obviously, is in this episode. He uses electrical powers. Wow, that's a pretty valuable secret. And that's not the right door I need to go down. It's not one of those. Ow! Hello! Oh, crap! Focus, focus. Well, okay, one other thing I discovered during my whole experimenting with this game is that the Hell Staff, its powered up mode is an absolute killer in a closed space. Because in a closed space, enemies are forced to bunch up, and when they're bunched up like that, they can't escape from the rain very well. Remember this trap. That's not the only one of its kind. Hey, 
Hell Staffs, normal mode's also quite effective for hall fights like that. It's like the ultimate hall fight weapon. Well, almost. I think the Fire Mace could probably beat it a little bit in the hall fight. grab the shield because I know what's coming up next. Oh, by the way, there's also a, another secret exit in this level. One that leads to a rather bizarre secret level. Again, no such thing as overkill, only just enough kill. But anyway, the secret exit. So you go back here and you flip this switch, and that switch opens these, as well as the normal exit. Which is back here. But we're not taking the normal exit. We're going to the secret exit, at which that switch also opened. That's actually pretty easy to discover. Because if, if you go into that little alcove, flip the switch, and then just continue this way, you'll notice that this door is open. And these are also secrets. And this is the secret exit. There we go. Alright. Onwards from the Azure Fortress into the Aquifer. Auditor, if you please. Combating the supernatural horrors that roam the Azure Fortress, you found a teleporter that has brought you to another one of the domes the Sparrow has conjured deep beneath the waves. You hope there is more to be found here than a gauntlet of gnashing teeth and flailing claws. But experience has taught you that a well-armed crossbow matters more than all the prayers of your kin. Indeed. I have learned well from experience. Hey, I always found this secret level to be a little strange, especially when compared to the others. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe it has to do with the big tank of water in the middle. But well, that is what an aquifer is. It's a large pocket of water under the ground. Some people actually pump water directly from an aquifer and use and purify it and use it for drinking water. Wah! Crap! This trap wasn't supposed to trigger yet! Did I slip onto the platform or something? Okay. Inside the giant water tank, or aquifer, is about three or so iron liches. And there's a secret that actually involves going in that giant water tank, so yeah. That's why I'm killing them now, because it's much easier to kill them now than it is when you're in the giant water tank. Give me a moment. 
Whoa! <laughs> I just saw what's waiting for me behind that door. <laughs> Good thing I paused. Wonder how that guy didn't get triggered by. Oh, that one got triggered. <laughs> Just getting everyone triggered. Most defensive battle ever triggers everybody. <laughs> Triggered. <laughs> Who's gonna win? Looks like the fire gargoyle might win. Oh. Oh. Fire gargoyle has gone to ground. He might be desperate. And ah, oh, the night wins. <laughs> flame orbs. I've also been, after watching over my previous videos, I apparently found out that I stand still quite a bit while playing this game, which can be a death sentence. So, I've been trying to work on that. Whoa! That's kind of half the point of my whole experimenting I was talking about. Do I have a tome? No, I do not have a tome. There's a few sets of tome. No, that'll take way too long. There we go. One thing I really like to do is kind of weave when I'm in a fight with enemies. I like to just weave around a place. Sometimes I just dive straight into a trap so I can get that urge out. Just weave around the place, shoot anything I can. That's one thing that I really don't get to do a lot in these sort of games. I really like it in these, uh, when there's open-ended battlefields in which I can sneak around and... and flank. Duck in somewhere and then leave my enemies guessing if I'm gonna pop back out there or elsewhere. that I can't pick up. Well, if I was doing cold starts, I would be able to pick that up. Oh! Ow! Ow! Oh, 
Let's see if I can get rid of this guy before... Guys. Before dealing with the key trap. There we go. Didn't hit that guy in the back. Oh, there's still some left. that much for the next area. I think it's mainly just golems or mummies prowling around. With uh, an exception behind the blue door. Ow! Gosh! They're hitting me with all the nastiest stuff. Okay. Um, I do not have a tome. I hope there's one the secret. There should be. There is. Good. this totally pointless secret with nothing in it? That's one question I would have to ask the developers. Well, anyways. So I'm back here. Well, anyways, what I needed that tome for is the blue key door. Sounds like it did the job admirably. Yep. One thing you gotta keep in mind about... <sighs> One thing you gotta keep in mind about the Powered Up Hell Staff is that you can only... you can only have three of those rainstorms going at once. So, it, you really can't spam it so much. Well, anyways, I think that'll be enough for now. Next time I see... next time we get through our adventure. We will continue on through the Ophidian Lair. <laughs> oh god, I remember that level.